Yo, we got hip hop history in the building. Bed Stars own definitely a part of the golden era of hip hop. Please welcome Lil C's the Vlad TV. C's what up? What's good? What's good, baby? What's up with you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you, brother. Long likewise, time. Likewise, likewise, dog. You know, we go way back, baby. True indeed. True indeed. Yo, What's C's, up? let's take this thing back. You got so much history. You've been part of so much hip hop history. Um, and I just want to cover as much of it as we can. You born and raised in Brooklyn, Brooklyn zone, Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. What was no it doubt. like growing up in the eighties and nineties? Uh, it was real. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it was a lot of poverty, a lot of struggle. There's a lot of crime going on in the neighborhood I was living in, which is totally different now. But you know, uh, you know, things change for the better. It's very, uh, it's, it's very gentrified now and diverse with all all races of people. But back then. It was the it was the neighborhood, you know what I mean? And it was just a lot of stuff just going on. Everybody was just trying to make a make a living and trying to survive, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, rap is the thing that kind of got us off the streets. True indeed. Like you are synonymous. Your best friend is arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, individual to ever touch a microphone in hip hop. How did you meet Biggie? And and I heard a rumor that um y'all might be related. Are y'all related at all? Nah, nah. Um, everybody be thinking we related because a few, of course, uh, some documentaries and probably a few interviews where you know people spoke on it. But nah, I'm not. Uh, you know, Big is full blown. He's full time Jamaican, hundred percent. I'm not Jamaican, but we were just very close. I knew Big since I was about seven years old. I was actually graduating from public uh public school, and I got hit by a car like two days before that. And um, I was walking to my prom with crutches, and he gave me like five or six dollars on my way to school, like to get you know, get me some candy, get me some lunch, and let me celebrate. And um, that was like our first like real connection of me, um, you know, remembering him. What was Big like when he was young? Cool man, cool. He, I mean, you know, he was about his business, he was about his hustle, but he he showed love though. You know, what I mean, he was all about his neighborhood and his peoples. You know, what I mean, you know, you see every interview. Before he passed, all he's talked about was his family and his homeboys. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all he really cared about was making sure he was good, his family was good, and his people was good. So he was just a dude that just, like, spread that love, you know, always looking out for other people. And he was always about his business, you know what I'm saying? Like a stand-up dude. That's dope. That's dope. Um, you know, I know Big started hustling at an early age. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, did you see Big go from just being a dude around the block to starting to hustle? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, kind of like everybody in the neighborhood was kind of doing that. That because there was like it was no other choice. Either you was rapping, or you was playing basketball, or you was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? And uh, of course, a lot of the youngsters that really didn't have, you know, that really had no direction, we all went to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's it, it was a hangout thing at first, just hanging out on the block and just chilling. And eventually, you might run into somebody or meet somebody that's putting you on to something, and it kind of just like went from there. You know what I'm saying? 